Hey, I'm Russ. And I'm Steve. Growing up in the 80s, we were introduced to video games, movies, and technology that made a lasting impression on us and forever enriched our lives. I think I'm gonna cry! It's been a fascinating journey to be a part of, one that we constantly treasure. Higher <laughs> Booty! Our goal is simple. Share our magical moments of discovery and geek out with lovely folks. Just like you! Uh, achievement unlocked! So if you crave pixel goodness, memorable moments, and experiences that make your inner child do the happy dance, you've come to the right place. Let's do this! Welcome to Joygasm! Ha <laughs> yeah! Everybody and welcome to Joygasm. My name is Russ, Xbox Live Toaster 360, and with me as always is my beautiful and bald brother Steve, aka Xbox Live Steve of Itch. Hello! As we kick off episode Lucky 13 on this June 10th, 2017. Steve, how you doing? Russ, I'm excited. Can't wait to get started. I am excited too. It's the kickoff day of E3, which uh it's always it's always a time for us to be able to you know have lots of joygasms, <laughs> joygasms in a row. Um, no, this is uh, I'm excited for this because it's it's the next gen stuff, uh, which it has been for the longest time, but um, only it's getting better and better and better every single year. So mm -hmm. um, when it was just a more of a 16 bit, 32 bit thing, I just looked at pictures and read video or saw videos and whatnot, but. Lately, uh, everything's been uh, a lot more popular, and I've been paying a lot closer attention. Absolutely. And what we're going to do is we're going to kick off today with EA's press conference, and then we're going to go into Bethesda and Microsoft's press conference tomorrow. And then, of course, as uh, mentioned in our previous episode, um, you are going to be out of the office, so to speak, to go up to mm -hmm. Canada. Canada. So, Canada. Without further ado, I say we jump right in. Let's see what the EA has to offer us. I have two words for EA games. Impress me. That's what I want to see. Um, anyway, we're, we'll be having some, some live commentary going through during the press conference. We won't talk your ear off because we won't be respectful of your time as well as the presenters. But uh, we've got some drinking drinks here. We're all in a celebratory mood. So without further ado, let's get started. I like countdown timers. Yeah. <laughs> it looks like we're going to start off with a little bit of football. Ooh, ah. A little drumline action. Well, as they're playing here, Russ, I'm going to tell you I got some Crown Royale for you. Oh. A little apple. A little apple royale. I have actually never tried the apple royale. Well... Stink, 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 that we put Mathis on the NFL map. A long shot from the depths of the unknown to being drafted by an NFL team. You look like Dan Marino right there. All eyes on you. Let's just stop you from hightailing again. This time. Let me ask you something. Why are you here? Because <laughs> football's my life. My father used to say, when the world knocks you down. That guy looked like an actor yeah, from uh, House of Cards. Yeah. Wait is miles behind. Long side. You're gonna get hit today. You're not the only one trying to get drafted. Remy. No, man, get you, get you. Remy. Yeah. Remy, that's right, yeah. Devin Wade at the line for the final play of the game. 
It's the biggest moment of your life. That is totally Remy. Yeah. yeah. Prove to the world that we belong. Madden 18 long shot. It looks like they're introducing some story elements into that. Almost yeah. like Friday Night Lights or something. I was thinking Friday Night Lights, yeah. Yeah. The round of applause for the drum line, guys. Uh, Andrew Wilson, he's been there for a long time. That's Madden like you've never seen it. And I might be biased, but I'm pretty sure that's the most innovative Madden we've done in well over a decade. Welcome to EA Play 2017, coming to you from the Hollywood Palladium. This is our second year at EA Play. Last year, we went out on a limb. We tried to do something a little different with a view to changing the way you interact with products before they launch. We wanted to, to do something that put the games in your hands earlier, and it showed us how much further we can go. As you can see, we've built a creative space here. We're right in the middle of it. This is going to be where it all goes down over the next three days. Interesting. Playing, creating, and sharing with the rest of the world. We've built it this way for a very simple reason. We want more of you to be able to experience this moment. For thousands of you in Hollywood this week, we have hundreds of stations for hands-on gameplay. And for tens of millions of you out there joining online from across the world, you won't hear it just from us. You'll hear it from players right here. They're here to see new things, to ask questions. It's going to be hard for me us, not to, to do tell an us Aussie what they accent like for the next five hours. What they don't. <laughs> They're going to connect with each other and create content. And of course, I'm not sure if he's Australian or British. As they possibly can. So let's set the stage for what we'll do over the next hour and a bit. Sounds We're plenty Aussie to me. Yeah, I think, you're right. I think it's Aussie. I'll set a stage. With major reveal, <laughs> massive innovation, and stories that'll pull you in. Two years ago, we launched Star Wars Battlefront, and we got a lot of feedback. A lot yeah. of Star, Star Wars, Wars Battlefront. A lot of it positive, a lot of it. and a bunch of it constructive. <laughs> as in, where's the single player campaign? So today, we're going to bring you 30 minutes of Star Wars Battlefront 2. And what we hope you'll see is that we've addressed all of the feedback. I'm going to pour. And gone even Ooh. further. We've got a mix of everything here for you. A look at new IP, some killer new trailers, demos, and a bunch of live gameplay. This is going to be a lot of fun. And it should be, right? Because we're all here for one simple reason. All of us share one fundamental belief. And that's that games are the best form of entertainment on the planet. Yeah. Yeah. yeah! yeah! They connect us like nothing else. They bring us together across cities and countries. They inspire us. And they make they you a lot of money. The fires of competition inside us. Games allow us to do <clears throat> extraordinary things my whistle here. and to be extraordinary in our own ways. Games enable us to be our most creative selves. Not bad. Whether well, that's nice. as game makers trying to pioneer new ways to play, or players making each game a unique expression of our own passion for what we do. Games put the power of play in our hands to do with it what we want and to make it our own. Our so own. let's celebrate. <laughs> for the next three days, we're here to celebrate play with all of you. And what better place to start than with a game that has taken the world by storm, mm -hmm. Battlefield 1. There's, yeah, there's more than 20 million Battlefield 1 players out there today, and we've got a lot to share about a revolution that's coming to this great franchise. So let's jump to Battlefield right from the creative heart of EA Play. All right, let's go. <laughs> I'm not at a city. Ooh. Hey everyone, I'm Andrew Galata, producer for Battlefield. Need to reduce the hot spot on that guy's face. Right here there you go. LA. Yeah. I'm standing inside the Creator Cave at EA Good Play, job, art director. where our community is creating new content to share with players across the globe. It's unbelievably rewarding to see more than 20 He's got a Soldier 76 haircut. Embracing the game. Oh my gosh, he does. <laughs> their own memorable <laughs> moments, only possible in Battlefield One. Let's take a look. Battlefield One. Hey, Noob, I got, I got some questions to ask you. Okay. What is it about the Battlefield franchise that's so special and appealing to you? The thing I find special about Battlefield yeah. is teamwork. I'm not good at shooting. Sometimes I like to repair or heal or hide. Oh, I just shot an airplane out with the game bullet. 
I'm most definitely proud to be a part of the Battlefield community. I've never been a part of any other gaming community where people are just so passionate about their games. Everyone in this community is focusing on making this game as best as it can be and expanding on the experiences that we've already had. <laughs> Was mich an Battlefield begeistert, ist die schiere Bandbreite an Dingen, die ich in diesem Spiel tun kann. Player versus tank versus plane versus environment. My most memorable moments is what I do with my community. A 64-man army that just does massive, crazy things. Oh, that's I made pretty cool. so many amazing friends who have become more like family. It's something that brought a whole lot of people together who will squad up and go and tear it up. Boom! You got it? Oh, I killed them all! I killed them all! Got a road kill. What the? <laughs> I'll never be able to do that again in my life. I'll never be able to do that again in my life. Never ever. That's it. That's as good as it gets. I should just stop playing. I should quit. I should quit. <laughs> he just disabled a moving truck with a grenade while jumping off a horse. <laughs> Incredible. We love these only in Battlefield moments, and we want even more of them. So we're bringing more ways for you to play. First, Night Maps debut this summer. Oh, sweet. In Neville Knights and Prise de Terre, nice. you'll need to deploy tactics as you fight through the night in a massive network of trenches. Second, I'm excited to announce a major revolution in Battlefield 1. We're bringing epic battles to the Eastern Front of oh, that's World nice War box I. Art. In the name of the Tsar, expands Battlefield 1 to the blistering winter in the East. I've always been a fan of this how they do the box art the for Battlefield. biggest front right. of World War I. And with it, we're bringing you six new maps, the Russian army, including the mighty Hussar cavalry, new vehicles and weapons to expand your arsenal, and the iconic Women's Battalion of Death. Cool. Finally, mm -hmm. we're introducing a richer gameplay experience in both progression and operations mode by bringing deeper player progression through all new assignments, the ability to tailor your playstyle with specializations, and new multi-battle experiences woven through the fan favorite game mode operations. All of this coming in September as part of In the Name of the Tsar. And for the next three days, the Lupcal Pass map from In the Name of the Tsar is right here at EA Play. For those of you tuning in, you'll get a glimpse of it from these guys when they share it on their channels very soon. So there you have it. Eight new maps in total, opening up the largest front in World War I with new ways to play. There's never been a better time to be part of the Battlefield community. Now enough of me. Let's give you a first look at in the you name. You can read of the a Tsar. teleprompter. That's good. A revolution <laughs> is coming. <laughs> He's doing good. Yeah. So in the name of the Tsar, there is no justice among men. Nicholas II, last Tsar of Russia. You will hear thunder and remember me. The sky will be the color of hard crimson. Your heart, as it was then. Will be on fire. It looks good. Does look good. So I buy it. I'm gonna get it. So is it more of like an expansion to the I, current I think game? Yeah, I think that's what they were talking Hi, about. Everyone. I have the privilege of leading our global development teams. Six thousand of the most creative people making truly amazing experiences, we including have Patrick Soderlund speaking right now. Now this summer is going to be huge. So much new content, so much more to play, and so many new ways to play. And there's one more thing we'll bring to Battlefield. Later this year, we're going to give you a new competitive Battlefield experience. We've heard you, you want a smaller, tighter experience focused on team play. You want all out war built for competition and you want it accessible to players and to viewers. And it's coming. 
I can't wait to share more with you guys at Gamescom in August. We want now, it now. Competition <laughs> is at the center of EA today. And we've always thought about it a little differently. We believe in making stars of all our players. Let, let me tell you something really cool. Last month, I was watching an amazing competitor, Shells. He made it to the FUT Championship Finals in Berlin. Six months ago, this guy was an unknown. Now he's a worldwide star. And he'll be competing with the best at the FIFA Interactive World Cup final in August. Now, we want to find more stars. So we're doubling down in competition in ways only EA can. This fall, we're launching the largest FIFA championship ever with many ways to compete. The best FUT players will compete in the FIFA Ultimate Team Champions Cups. Sounds and like they're trying to do what Blizzard's been doing. You can represent your favorite real world team. It's true, you can. We'll have much more to share, including our Madden plans later this summer. As developers, your passion is what fuels us. Your stories inspire us, and competition, like nothing else, brings them to life. Looks like we got a bit of a sports montage going on right now. In this tournament, at least he has that. This is my first time. First time. My first time. This is my first time competing. I just thought maybe this is something I could do. So many good players. I want to beat them just like they want to beat me. Oh, wow. I just don't understand how people think I'm the underdog. That is confidence right there. This is the highest level that you can play. There is a real thin line between success and failure. How nervous are you right now? It's going to be a really tough game. I'm never going to lose ever in my life. Wide open. He's just a person you can hate. He is an absolute beast. See a handshake. Nope, not gonna see it. He's <laughs> come up in second place time and time again. And we have a game! Rocky scored it! Now's the time to stand up. Stop it! Skip it! Moving on! This is what competitive gaming's all about. Oh, I would! We're about to crown a new king. There it is! It's Rocky that is your champion! Were you ever in doubt in that game? I was in doubt the whole time. <laughs> These guys are going through something special right now. Ladies and gentlemen, sitting on your couch, this could be you. I think it's a pretty good idea. It is, but um, everybody's going to be so filled full of adrenaline that uh, <laughs> I think some words will be flowing around a little bit. Yeah. Got a little, I believe it's the FIFA soccer trailer playing right now. Lots of running, lots of hustling, lots of sweat. No! Oh! you and my team. There's no I in it. I bring it on my team. Who do you want to holler? Who do you want to never know? Don't be a sheep when you can be the goal. Break this up in time and you never know. Don't show up to my show if you've got no. Yeah. FIFA 18. That's what I'm talking about with the physics. Like, they got the physics of the ball yeah. and the spinning and the jumping. I mean, that's what Hollywood needs to take note of the game developers. <laughs> FIFA's always been really popular. sure what that is. It's like they're taking like sportscasters and mixing with celebrities. Mixing with celebrities and watching the games or something. 
Oh, okay, here we go. They're the two guys I went that early, the Rog. I went early. Ladies and gentlemen, we are the men in blazers. That's Rog, the bald one. I'm Davo, way less bald in person. We are delighted to be here. Oh, we really are. Some of you will know us as the hosts of one of the top three most popular football shows ever to be produced in the panic room and the crap part of Soho. That is true. Somehow, we convinced world leaders like Will Ferrell <sighs> to come talk to us about the fifth best sport in the world. Oh, we've tricked them all, Davo. Yeah. And the common thread for us is always football and FIFA. And when I speak to players around the world, they all tell me their experience with FIFA runs so deep, deep. it actually impacts the way they play on the field. That is art influencing life. It's Davo. all melding together. Rog, look at this. Look at how the world's game comes to life in FIFA 18. <sighs> Player personality that differentiates even look nice, the don't they? from the smalls. They've yeah. even perfected the inimitable run style. Got some grass stains Rangie on the uniforms, Sterling, the wrinkles are looking better. Detail, Anton Griezmann's the clothing. technical ability to suavely part, fly past all defenders. And so suave. And these atmospheres, Rog, take a look at this. <laughs> they make it feel like I'd be you're curious in the if that's actually game play footage or if that's pre And this is massive, Rog. They've now got the ideal athlete helping to develop the game. Is there anyone better and more genetically sound than Cristiano Ronaldo? Could you get anyone better than that? Well, that man doesn't have a six pack. He's got an eight pack. You're right. And EA Sports know the only way to make How Cristiano you know look better <laughs> is to jam him in spandex and capture his data. You back think he has a poster of Ronaldo on his ceiling above his bed? Here. Back to back champion of Europe. Yeah. The La Liga title. Yeah. Blonde, we have literally every trophy. And most impressive <laughs> from our perspective, oh, that beautiful head of hair. He has hair, Roger. But as huge as Ronaldo <laughs> has been this past year. Always got to get a ball joke in there somewhere. Bigger than them all. <laughs> oh, yeah. Peter no Moore one can resist. Becoming CEO at Liverpool. Good luck with that <laughs> one, mate. Yeah, no, no, Rog. No, Rog. The biggest story in football is, of course, Alex Hunter. Yeah, the flow the of their dialogue is almost kind of like a Guy Ritchie film. And the star of the yeah, journey. it's a little much. Alex would go a little, a little too rehearsed. More than 360 million goals <laughs> in his first season. Wow. Well, that, that one's true, and so is this one. Whenever our good old English national team take the field over the past year, yeah. the single name most tweeted, yeah. even more than Sir Harry Kane, yeah. Alex Hunter. Yeah, we Alex could have used today, Rog. <laughs> <laughs> we could have won it all. Yeah. Talking about winning it all, though, what a story about you. Tell us about Hunter's winning it all, eh? Winning the FA Cup, <laughs> just 18 years old, barely passed his bar mitzvah. Uh -huh. He's experienced more in his first season than I will in my entire life. That is true. It was Sad quite the true. start to a truly amazing journey. Get off journey. the stage, but just the watch some games. Every footballer is a journey yeah, filled with victory, defeat, Glory and conflict, dreams come true, and challenges <laughs> They do ahead. come true, so don't they, eh? Everyone wants to know, what is next <laughs> okay, for our man it. Alex Hunter? <sighs> I don't know, Davo. But What's a tie a tie? Like everyone looks sharp, eh? Hey? Governor? Okay, back to games. Here we go. Oh, maybe not. Question on everybody's lips. What next for Hunter? Everyone's hunting Hunter. Alex Hunter has been talked about. I think all these other kind of talk. I think that's just paper talk, if I'm honest. Sehen wir Alex Hunter bald in der Bundesliga? Seine Spielweise ist atemberaubend. Alex Hunter ist ein proper talent, ein huge talent. He needs the right club and the right manager. And he's probably lucky to have it. Alex Hunter is in the media every day and it's getting annoying to be fair. Oh, it's so irritating. What kind of club would let Alex Hunter go? Now, I'm not really sure that a move is the right thing for him. Just for fun, you're right. But this guy's getting two victories. Which blood? Alex Hunter is a great player. He's a piece. There she is. He's very quick. Good. Amazing skills. Hunter is a cante phenomenal. Hopefully he's got good people around him. Hunter's bombed his bread. He has to look after himself. Go! Go! I, I would move. Rumours have got to start. Don't go, Ali. Alex Hunter, you really are wasting time. Will Alex Hunter stay or go? I have no clue who Alex, Alex Hunter is, but I guess he plays soccer and he's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not a big FIFA guy, but I imagine he's extremely well known within those circles, you know. Oh, nice hairdo, bro. What up, bro. guys? Thank you for having me, EA. If you guys don't know who I am, my name is Jesse Wellens, and I am a YouTube creator. So I am YouTube here. YouTube creator. I guess that's what they're calling him now. Talk I guess. about Need for Speed. 
Um, right. Talk payback. to us about Need for Speed. Uh, if you guys bro. didn't know, Need for Speed Payback. I'm. Bu- um. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, maybe you should go back to being a YouTube creator, yeah. there, buddy. Yeah, that's a great game. But all right. All set aside. I'm a YouTube creator. Need for Speed Payback. Start over. Coming out. Spend less time on your Marcus, hair and more on your script. Producer here. He is the producer of the game. Thank you, Nick, for having me. Hey, man. Thanks, Jesse. Um, obviously, we're really excited <laughs> to tell everyone about Need for Speed Payback here today, but more importantly, show it. In Payback, you are on a revenge mission to take down the house. House is a cartel that rules the city's casinos, criminals, and cops, and that is delivering a, we're delivering a brand new experience with wild heist missions, intense cop pursuits, grueling car battles, and jaw-dropping action moments. No so basically, everything needs for speed done before. First uh, across the finish line, we are putting you behind the, the wheel of an action driving fantasy. So, Need for Speed has been around for a long time. There's been a lot of new things coming to the game and a lot of old things that people are familiar with the franchise. Exactly. You know, we're putting a new narrative into the game where you drive three different characters Tyler, Jess, and Mac, all bringing their own unique playstyle to the game. You drive across city, mountains, deserts, and canyons in the most diverse open world ever made for a Need for Speed game. There's a lot of great new elements in this game, but also, obviously, a lot of fundamentals like customization. We go way deeper when it comes to visual, perform- visual, visual and performance customizations, as well as introducing something on top of that, something we call Derelict, <laughs> which are abandoned classic cars that you transform from scrap to stock to supercars. Speaking of customization, my homie Nick, AR12 Gaming, he looks like he's customizing a classic Beetle. Um, he's going to be doing a lot more of this customization and gameplay at 1.30 on the stream if you want to come back. But enough talking about it, I'm trying to see it. Yeah, you know, you know we're That's absolutely right. very excited it's to show you the bed. first see it, uh, one of the blockbusters <laughs> from Need for Speed Payback <laughs> called the Highway Heist that shows that intense action driving experience. So let's turn around and take a look. All right, let's check out Need for Speed. Koenigsegg Regera, 0 to 60 in 2.7 seconds. Wow, 2.7 seconds? Grab the yeah. It'll That's be part a of quick. the convoy. What are you thinking? Quick hit and run. Get me close to the truck and I'll take care of the rest. Oh, looks good. Get me close to that truck before it hits the tunnel. You know, one of the things about these games, the, the environments have improved car. so much over the years. Yeah, they have. Get rid of these guys. That's what I'm talking about. Let's get that truck. Got the takedown. Mm-hmm. That's still there. Yeah, the graphics are gorgeous. Out of his mind. What the fruber fragger? Going on here. <laughs> the Forget the tunnel. Be Golly the gee, this is dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, more house cars headed your way. That was cool. Full evasive action with the cars. Come back and forth in the road. I, for some reason, I don't think a semi can drive that fast or a Shelby Cobra couldn't keep up, but that's a very good, astute point you made there. <clears throat> Pretty astute point, Oh, man, Steve. You, I just had that car paid off. Yeah. These guys are tougher. Freaking tanks is what they are. They're going down either way. That looks like a Honda Cross Tour or a Tesla or something. <laughs> Take him out, Ty. That was a good one right there. Yeah. Guys, finish coming up fast. Jess, I've got yeah, a Yeah, forget the Shelby Cobra. Idea. I want to buy that semi. Yeah, I mean, I think I'm right. Can I race Get that thing? It's like a drag <laughs> semi. Now or never, Jess. Do it. Keep it steady. Here we go. Fast and the Furious. Yeah, total Fast and Furious. Jump. He let the woman jump out? Why didn't he just jump out? Why didn't she drive it? It's not very chivalrous. <laughs> Do the th- <laughs> I got this. That's what I'm talking about. Good job, team. Let's take this baby home. <laughs> Let's see what 
she can do. Okay, boys. Let's even the odds. Well, I think I'm interested. Looks pretty intense. I haven't played a Need for Speed game in a few years. I can assure you that plays as well as it looks. I think the last, last Need for Speed I played play, was The Run, which original. was at least the program was something probably we three years ago. To support small independent studios. Shall bring experiences that are unique, gorgeous, innovative, and memorable to the world. We are partnering with game creators through the process from development to marketing to publishing. But EA Originals is also about funding, about offering a level of security. The profits from these games go back to the hands of the developers. We have been overwhelmed with the indie community's reaction to this. I can tell you, we've received hundreds of pitches, many of them brilliant. And as a result, we now have several new titles in development. As a result, Today, we've been able to take to your ideas you next and EA profit off of them without paying you. One that exactly. I've been very close to from the beginning. This game tells a story in an entirely new way. Now, a few years ago, I played the indie hit, Brothers, A Tale of Two Sons, with my oldest daughter. I loved how different the game felt. The mechanics and storytelling were really cool, and we both loved the emotional story. So I decided to contact the game's creator, Joseph Farris. When we met, we instantly realized we shared the same passion for games and how to bring new no. experiences to players. <laughs> I also found out that he was building a new studio called Hazelight. Now, we're thrilled to be working with Joseph to bring his new project to all of you. What started out as a wild idea on paper has now turned into a groundbreaking, one-of-a-kind game called A Way Out. Take a look. What's your plan? Originals, huh? Stay there <laughs> away from me, okay? I think I had some major sideburns. The graphic style's cool. Not seen anything groundbreaking so far, Russ. I'm sure you have good reasons to bust out of here, but I need to get out of here too. Yeah? Not my problem. Oh, co op. Trying to skate together, eh? Huh? <laughs> it's pitch black. We need a light. Screw it. I'll go first. Oh, crap! You okay? Oh. Wow. You have a problem? Yeah, I got a problem with you. I love you, buddy. That's it. What are you doing here? She's my daughter, too. See? Problem solved. Come on, Leo! <laughs> it's actually... I'll check that out. Yeah, it's piqued my interest. A way out. It's, I mean, they're coming up with a different story, so that's cool. Yeah. I mean, oh. and they're bringing co-op back, you know, split screen style. Mm -hmm. hey, I haven't had that in a quite a while. My name is Joseph Varis, Faris, and I'm the writer, director <laughs> I don't of know my last out. name. <laughs> I'm so excited to be here and show you the game. So, after I finished Brothers, I wanted to make another game that pushed the boundaries on how to tell stories without compromising on gameplay. And this is the reason why I started Hazelight Studios together with the team behind Brothers. And working with EA's originals was perfect for this, because we have the full creative freedom and trust from EA to deliver the game we truly believe in. And that is very important for his life, let me tell you that. I so, think the brothers the should play out came brothers. To me when me and a friend you know what I'm saying, to find the co-op I think you're onto something. Just a drop in, drop out <laughs> I sense a bro date in I our to play not too distant future. <laughs> where the characters had unique personalities and goals. A game where me and a friend can embark on an emotional journey. Together. I like how all the they're, they're putting and all the detail exactly on people's faces now. Yeah. yeah, I mean all the structure. The game and whatnot. is designed for split-screen co-op only, and I mean only. So you will be able to play it online, but to get the full experience and feel, we want you and your friend to play it in your couch. That's kind of cool. And yeah, old school. Wise. <laughs> Although I do wish it had an yeah, online component where you and I could play right? co-op with full Action. screen. 
finally. True. <laughs> yeah. Probably do. And uh, what was I going to say? Yeah, let me tell you. Okay, wait. I like this guy. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, come on. Gameplay-wise, it's going to be crazy. There's going to be a huge amount of variation. It's, you're going to be able to play everything. I mean, not everything, but a lot of stuff. They're going to be. He's being sincere about it. He's yeah. being real. That's cool. Action. Yeah, I not like following the teleprompter all the way. Mm-hmm. That's cool. I like that. I appreciate so, it. So, but let me tell you this. After you finish playing a, a way out, I will tell you, you will play a co-op game like never before. I tell you this, I know, huh? I, I mean, you trust I me. That. I know. I, I guarantee it. Talking, I, but you I trust can't me. help it because it's true. I'm so pumped up, it's crazy. You don't know, I live, breathe this game. <laughs> I'm telling you. It's like, he is cool, though. Yeah. I like him. Yeah. Yeah. Kick He's ass. endearing. I like it. So right now, I will show you a gameplay video. I'm going to show you just a small part of the game, but still, you're going to get blown away. And I also want to say that I'm so proud and happy to be part of this industry. It's crazy how fun it is to be here and do these games. It's so much fun. And also, one last thing, one last thing. I want to say hello I'll drink to, to that. my Hazelight team watching live from Sweden. Thank you. Goodbye. Hop shaky. Boom. Come on. He's <laughs> the best part of the show so far. Yeah, yeah. A Way Out is a story-driven co-op game. It is designed, played, and experienced only in split-screen co-op, which means you have to play the game with a friend, either online or on your couch. Told ya! The game starts in a prison. You play as Vincent and Leo. You and a friend will get to know your characters and unfold their stories. One guy's bald and bearded. That's me. The other guy's got a full head of hair. That's you. But Harvey killed someone very close to me. Guy's got lamb chops. With or without you, I'm going after him. Let me show you some of the scenarios in the game. On the right side, you see Liu, who's already in prison. On the left, you see Vincent, who just arrived. Now, if you look to the right again, you can see that Liu can be controlled while Vincent is in a cutscene. That's cool. Here's yeah. another one. I dig that. Vincent and Liu are now in the laundry room. Your goal is to smuggle sheets using a laundry cart. You can approach the scenario in different ways. Either get to cart with Vincent. No, I got a good pack right here. I think it's got your name on it. It's uh, broken. I don't know. Or with Leo. Uh, get over here, you idiot. Yeah, but I think those two guys are just about to fight. Uh, what the? What? Who's him? In a way out, you will experience something new all the time. Everything you do in the game is unique for that scene. We want you and your friend to be focused and engaged throughout the entire story. But let me tell you, this is just the beginning of what you will be experiencing in a way out. I really like how they're exploring relationships. Right. Relax, man, I got this. That looks totally cool. I want to check that out. Yeah. It's like these two guys who may be wrongly accused or something, trying to break out of jail. Or maybe they are accused, but they're or, just trying to break I know, out. I know, but, yeah. again. The relationship is like the, um, the key element Thank in you, that. Joseph. That game is absolutely stunning, and I can't wait for you guys to get your hands on it. Uh, now let's switch gears for just a minute. It's great to be here showing you the games you'll play this year. But at the same time, we are inspired to look farther ahead. Creative ideas combined with new technologies become an unstoppable force. We have teams today taking technologies that are changing the world and using them to change the way we play. These are the futurists, the incubators, our talented artists, designers, and engineers within our studios, our Frostbite team, our digital platform team, and a new research division (laughs) called Seed. What motivates me every day is the responsibility we have to push our industry forward. I like the Seed logo. That's one it's reason. It's like, kind of like an Enron logo. Division. <laughs> Seed is a small, <laughs> stealthy team that I work with on a daily basis, exploring some of our most visionary concepts, like deep I learning. I guess they're not stealthy networks. anymore now that he's announcing them. <laughs> Creating a world for you to define, to interact with, and share as you wish. Or virtual, virtual humans with deeply sophisticated artificial intelligence. So instead of one main character shared by millions, we can have millions of main characters shaped by you. That's just the beginning of how we can blur reality and the digital world. Go anywhere, share your discoveries, be anyone. The games become yours. 
Now, what we know today is that interactive entertainment will change more in the next five years than it has in the last 45. Together, we are building that future. There was games 45 years ago. One that disrupts, empowers, and is full of play. Uh, pinball games. <laughs> and to do that, we also need innovative new platform technology. Innovative. So when we were thrilled when we got our first project, Scorpio dev kits from Microsoft. Hey, hey. Six teraflops and true 4K graphical fidelity. Give me some teraflops. Now these Madden LF NFL 18 visuals <laughs> are just a taste of what can be accomplished combining well, Frostbite the graphics with that. Project Scorpio. And already we are creating the most detailed, high resolution environment you you've ever seen on in the console. Jerseys, yeah. Madden looks absolutely stunning. But as game makers, see awesome the guys graphics veins and effects like sweat. are just the beginning. You can the see game has sweat. to feel amazing as well. <laughs> Prodi Scorpio is a powerful platform, and it's coming at the right time. Now, I have one more thing before I go. New IP is one of the purest forms of innovation in our industry. A brand new idea combined with the latest tech and a vision for something extraordinary. The next game will push every boundary for you. It is vast, dangerous, beautiful, and unexpected. So this is just the first tease that we're showing you today. I guess Dan will is all about unexpected, so sort of. much more in the Microsoft press conference tomorrow, so don't miss that. But for now, here's the first glimpse of our brand new IP from BioWare. Oh, dude. Here you go, Russ. Oh, man, this is what I was talking about before. Is it going to be KOTOR? Is it going to be... Something new is gonna be a destiny killer. It's our armor. It protects us from what lies beyond. It's not Bioshock. No, Bioware didn't do Bioshock. Oh, my bad. That was Bethesda. Get out there. You either live with the choices you make, or die trying to change them. It's definitely not KOTOR. Oh, that's the a cool name, Anthem. Here. It's just the beginning. Oh man, I got chills. I'm very excited about that. That might no be the destiny killer that they were talking about. I have no clue what that is, but hey, everybody, I I'm, I'm excited Brian, either way. <laughs> and I'm here today to share the latest about <laughs> NBA Live 18 with you. But instead of talking about it, I'd like to show you. We've spent the last two years completely overhauling energy. virtually every aspect of gameplay. <laughs> now we're going to go outside to a hands-on station out in FanFest so you can check out some of those improvements. And then we're going to come back in here and give you more details about how NBA Live 18 introduces an entirely new way to play a basketball game. We call it the one. Gibbs, Connor, over to you. Thank you, Sean. You look fantastic. Every single time I see you, we are here out at FanFest EA Play. That's I want to see everyone issue going on, on over there. Use that hashtag EA Play. Tell me what games you're excited to see. I am telling you right now, <laughs> I am excited. He's in a small booth, like right next to the audience. <laughs> NBA Live 18, and no one better in the business than my guy right here, creative director Connor Dugan. Connor, let's take first look. NBA Live 18. Yeah, what's up? I mean, I'm super excited that people finally get to get their hands on NBA Live. We're gonna take a look at a replay we just got. Q and I were playing. I'm controlling LeBron. LeBron. Q's controlling KD. Let's take a look. My name get is all Q. these angles in here. I want to see right. the sweat from James Bond. All right. So Bond. what we're looking at here is I'm using my right stick <laughs> dribble control and I'm performing any combination of moves I want. So I can go behind the back, between the legs, and now I'm trying to attack the basket. Oh man, those but graphics look really good. Q cuts me off with a flick of his left stick, and then I try to go back at him again. This time I'm going to go middle, but Q's late. He doesn't hit his left stick, he misses a timing window, and now I have an open lane to the hoop. So we see Zaza coming over. Tell me he finishes strong. He does Tell finish me he finishes strong. strong. I use my right stick to finish with the left hand, as you can see here, right over top of Zaza, finishing the lane. And then there we have it. LeBron's looking like LeBron. Nice tight shot. <laughs> LeBron. <laughs> That's what it's all about right there. I appreciate this first look at NBA Live 18. Sean. Back to you. Thanks, fellas. <laughs> Thank you. We're excited for all of you to get your hands on NBA Live. So that was like blocking the person will have an trying to make the shot. To do so I think they're, they were implementing some sort of thumbstick gameplay. Now, this demo will give everyone the chance to start the one and be introduced to this new basketball world. 
jumpstart your own legacy through solo, co-op, and multiplayer experiences, and carry all of your progress over to the full game. Now let's take a look at the one. We got some basketball footage going here. NBA Live 18 is an all new way to pursue your legacy. Centered on you, your journey is defined by the choices you make. Welcome to The One. The One unleashes the freedom to play how and with whom you want. Here, the respect you earn on the streets matters just as much as the rings you earn in the league. Rise through the ranks in the league, an authentic NBA experience where you dominate the hardwood on your way to winning championships. But the new NBA Live goes beyond the league, taking you into the streets, where the rules and how you earn respect are different. Team up with friends to take down NBA legends at historic courts like Venice Beach. Throughout your journey, your on-court performance leads to increased skills and new gear as your hype builds in both the streets and the league, from Venice to Rucker Park and everywhere in between. Join the community with five-on-five -five pickup games at iconic, real-world courts. Hit the Drew League and continue to build your legacy in the Pro-Am Tour. Earn the right to go head-to-head -head with the very best and show off your signature style. From East Coast to West Coast, from the streets to the league, everything you do matters. Your legacy is defined by you and how you choose to play. This is your world. It's time for you to be the one. Once again, they're kind of doing that whole user hero journey, but in the sports realm. Right. Well, it's about time they've doing that because each sports game that comes out, it's like, okay, here's the sports game, better graphics. Thanks, here's another sports game, Absolutely. better thanks graphics. So it's about time. Here sharing yeah. games today, and a special thanks to Joseph and Hazelight. How about that for some passion? Now we've got a massive finale coming up here in just a moment. Thirty minutes of pure, unadulterated Star Wars. But that's but what I'm talking about. There, I wanted to pause for just a moment. <laughs> Last week, we did something pretty amazing together. We held our annual EA Play to Give campaign, celebrating the importance of inclusion and play in our communities. Would you mind filling life. me back up with some more we crowds? We partnered with three Indeed, outstanding charities, the United Nations He For She, and anti-bullying organizations, the Pacer Center, and Ditch the Label. We... No? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> We donated a million dollars to these three great organizations in support of building a more inclusive world. And here's where play comes in. Yeah, All are. of you, yeah. our millions of players Muchas out there, gracias. joined us in support of inclusion. You came out in play in nine in-game challenges. And by coming together, we are showing the world what a positive force that games can be. And to thank you for that, we're opening ways for you to play a bunch of great games for free. Starting today for the rest of the week, Origin Access, as well as the Vaultlin EA Access, are free. For PlayStation 4 players, we'll also have a bunch of free trials running all week. Microsoft. We're talking FIFA, Madden, PVZ Garden Warfare 2, Star Wars Battlefront, and much more. So jump in, bring your friends, have fun with some great games this week, Just for PS4? or you're getting ready and excited I'm not sure. for what's to come. Now, without further ado, we bring you... Star Wars Battlefront 2. All right. Impress me. Ooh. John Boyega. At EA Star Wars, will fans get a full-on offline story mode? That's exactly what I've been talking about. Man, that's loud. <laughs> yeah. That was the biggest thing that was a, a 
huge flaw from EA was when they first released the first Star Wars game. It had no single player campaign. And obviously they've heard that with all the tweets and whatever those are. 2,651 retweets of that. <laughs> Bunch of stormtroopers coming out onto the stage, looking handsome as usual. Oh snap! Who's this? I'm not Hello. Oh, she's the actress for the new game for Star Wars Battlefront 2. I'm Janina Gavon Carr. Ooh, that rolls and off I the tongue, doesn't it? I play Commander Iden Versio, leader of the Inferno Squad in Star Wars Battlefront 2. <laughs> yeah, she's the main uh, protagonist, <laughs> or I guess you know, main character, if you will. I'm also an advocate for in-depth cinema caliber story in games. That tweet from John Boyega <laughs> was like the tweet heard around the world. It spoke for all of us. Yeah. When can we play a Star Wars story? Yep. We don't want to just relive the movies. We've watched them a million times. What we want to do is have a new and authentic untold story. A story that delivers new perspectives and enables us to play as some of our favorite Star Wars characters while also introducing new ones. Mm -hmm. And just like Rogue One tells an essential Star Wars story ahead of A New Hope, Star Wars Battlefront II will tell a new Star Wars story that helps bridge the gap between Return of the Jedi and The Force Awakens. Ah, uh, snap! Very cool. It's good. <laughs> That's good. It's but EA good. didn't just stop there. We loved the previous Battlefront of 2015, but we wanted more. Star Wars Battlefront 2 is much bigger than the previous title, with more than three times the content of the first game. In other words, it's not a game that was rushed out to market, didn't have a uh, single-player campaign. Couch co -op, first one was a beta it back for this one. With the return of Skirmish. So Skirmish! I'm going to be settling up with someone playing me some Battlefront 2. <laughs> In multiplayer, there are more heroes, more vehicles, more planets. I've been to some of them. More space battles and starfighter assault and deeper progression and Give me customization some starfighter as well <laughs> as content from across all eras. But, as we know, Star Wars is not just some checklist of great features. How does Battlefront 2 play? The team at DICE in Stockholm has some of the most talented multiplayer designers in the world, and they've been working with the EA Game Changers to make sure Star Wars Battlefront 2 has the multiplayer we're all looking for. These Game Changers, they basically get like tapped on the shoulder because they're the best Battlefront players in the world, and then they get secretly flown out to Stockholm. As long as they provide valuable feedback, they get an early look at the game. Sounds like an awesome program, and if I didn't suck at multiplayer, maybe I'd get an invite. That's true. So, let's hear more from at them she plays. about their time mm -hmm. at DICE. Yeah, DICE is one of my favorite companies. After the release of Star Wars Battlefront 1, the community thought there should have been more. And the good news is this, the developers have been listening. I'm really excited to let the Game Changers get their hands on the game. This is going to stay, right? Sorry? The clean UI look is going to stay. There's still time to change something if it's not working. Oh my god! My first impression with the game is upgraded. All three eras are going to be in the game. No, no! Earth Boss coming at me! Oh, okay, Palace Boss! We've got a whole bunch of new features. One of the biggest ones that a lot of fans are excited about is the class system. They split the characters up into different classes. They have different weapons, special abilities that you can customize. It affects your health. It affects how you are going to support your team. There's going to be more content. You're going to have to get used to a lot of new different techniques on how to play. The level design looks good. The gun yeah, play it does. And the weapons have completely been redone compared to the first Battlefront. Now there is a length and skill gap in it. It feels a lot better and go, oh, okay, this gun feels kind of more real, less floaty. Which is your favorite oh, hero so far? We're introducing a system called Battle Points, which will allow you to become not only heroes, but other things on the battlefield. As you're helping your team play the objective, you gain these points. There's such a plethora of things to spend it on. Vehicles or even coming in as a hero. 
And the coolest thing, I think, is a level of customization, not just from a weapon standpoint, yes, but the Darth actual Maul. Darth Maul. own ability. Kylo Ren. Collaborating with the Game Changers is always a really great working environment when you're trying to figure things out. I mean, to know that you're giving key feedback to make it a better experience for everybody, it's like putting your footprint out there and saying, look, I'm part of this. Uh, is everyone in position? Yeah, ready. Everyone ready? So I'm going to participate in making the trailer. It's a whole different level of fantasy. All right, recording. So in three, two, one. And now, on behalf of the EA Game Changers and DICE, this is the world premiere of Star Wars Battlefront II multiplayer gameplay. Let's see it. Ooh, Naboo, looks good. Oh my gosh, is that gameplay footage? Look at that, dude. It looks gorgeous. Yeah, wow. Might have to get me some Battlefront too. Sector is clear. Oh, Darth Maul. Laying waste. Dude, uh, this looks exceptional. Oh, I'm getting goosebumps. Yeah. Oh, there's Yoda. He looks good, too. Ray and Kylo Ren. Turn the sound uh, up and get a subwoofer. There she is. Yeah. They, uh, they did a good job on her face. Oh, that was cool looking. Grab onto something. I'm trying. Poof. <laughs> 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 wow. If that doesn't give you reason enough to buy a surround system, I don't know what will, but TV speakers aren't going to do that game justice. Yoda, Darth Maul, Wookiees, Kylo Ren versus Rey. I, I, I watched that thing like 20 times <laughs> with my mom before this even started. My mom's here. Yes, it's a big day for me. I'm sorry. So. <laughs> okay. So we have even more exciting things for you. In just a moment, you two personality, I, Justine, shoutcaster Alex Goldenboy Mendez, and DICE developer Paul Kesslin will showcase Assault on Feed, the world premiere of Star Wars Battlefront II's multiplayer. Yep. We've got 39 game changers ready to go, head to head in a 20 versus 20 match, Battle on Feed, and I'm going to take the 40th slot. We'll see. <laughs> okay, but you're not going to want to miss this because, like, maybe you've seen some teasers, but this is the real thing, okay? All the bells and whistles, all the newness. I want to fly that ship take you there, in one Starfighter. Another big Star Wars Battlefront fan has some exciting news. Hi, guys. It's John Boyega here. You thought I wasn't going to turn up. Yes, I was. But I'm sorry I can't be there with you because um, I'm doing a play in London. But I do have some great news. Obviously, you know I'm a massive fan of Star Wars Battlefront 1. And now we're going into the next chapter with Star Wars Battlefront 2. And I'm very, very excited to share this news with you. We've seen Yoda. We've seen Luke. We've seen all the other characters. But where's Finn? Finn will definitely be a part of Star Wars Battlefront 2 alongside with Captain Phasma as part of the first season of free content. And there's more. On top of that, we also get to play on the new planet crate that you saw at, on the uh, Last Jedi teaser trailer uh, in April. So this is gonna be an exciting time. I'm gonna be playing. If you see Finn running around whooping some ass, it's me. Um, <laughs> so I'm getting ready, getting set for you guys to play with me on Star Wars Battlefront 2. And I'm excited. Let's play. <laughs> okay, but did you listen? 
Finn and Phasma are headed to Star Wars Battlefront 2 this holiday, and it will be free. Yes. Oh, those character models look good. The team yeah. at DICE heard our feedback loud and clear on the previous <laughs> Stop Battlefront. Stop charging us to death. to keeping this community <laughs> together with themed seasons of content post-launch for all players at no Bring additional that, charge. Right. Mm, absolutely. Cheers. I'm cheers, Rona. So, the first season, inspired by Star Wars The Last Jedi, is only the beginning of the additional content coming to this game. All post-launch heroes, maps, weapons, and vehicles will be free for everyone who owns Star Wars Battlefront 2. Yes. And yesterday, EA announced that players who pre-order will get early access to multiplayer beta and Yoda's epic lightsaber mastery star card. So, oh. let us recap. <laughs> New essential Star Wars story. Multiplayer across all three Star Wars eras. Check. Space battles. Check. Split screen co-op. Check. And free content that will keep us playing together for years to come. Check it. Check, check, check. Yes, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah, applause. <laughs> Somebody clap. <laughs> I am so honored to be just a tiny little part of this team making this amazing game. I can't believe they let me do this today. And <laughs> I can't wait to play the game in its entirety in November. And I get to start right now. So I'm going to go pick up my controller, and I'm going to throw it over to I, Justine, and Golden Boy, and Paul to take us to Assault on Feed, the world premiere of Star Wars Battlefront 2's multiplayer. She did a nice job. Yeah. Thanks so did. much. Hey guys, welcome to the world premiere of Star Wars Battlefront 2's multiplayer gameplay, Assault on Feed. We are ready to show you guys the live Feed. gameplay for the first time. I'm your host, I Justine, and with me here today, we've got Golden Boy and Paul Kesslin, producer from Dice. What have we got going on here today, guys? We got a lot going on today. Uh, first of all, what we're going to see today is a three-stage mode. It's our, our new gameplay. Uh, we'll be showing the uh, we'll be showing people going. Uh, the droids are attacking Theed. Uh, they'll be going all the way up the main the main pathway towards the Royal Palace. They need to escort the MTT tank. Uh, from there, if we progress to stage two, uh, the droids need to try to bypass security, make their way into the palace Look at that itself. Map. Uh, if they're successful, oh, they'll cool. be able to take on the throne room. And there, the droids uh, will ideally try to capture that from the, the clone army. Unfortunately, the clone army's still there, needs to try to push him out and make that last stand. Can we just take a moment here and appreciate the fact that we get to be droids in Star, in Star Wars? This is gonna be awesome. I was just thinking yeah. that, because anyway, in so many Star decided? Wars games, you're like, oh, be a Jedi, here's another Jedi, here's another Jedi. I wanna be somebody you else. Come along you know? over here, yeah. because we're gonna see some great gameplay. We have some great, great game changers who are gonna be uh, competing here, and I use competing as a term because these guys are holding nothing back just yet. Yeah, no, it's been super exciting, and we got a chance to play yesterday, and it's just really fun to sort of get into this environment. You know, it's something that we've seen Ooh. in the movies, but we're actually in the gameplay. And Golly, here, man, look at that. Yeah, it looks great. So let's talk more about what we're seeing here and getting into this, because there's three phases to this. So currently, we're in phase one. That's right, and also we have some great game changers. You saw one of them pop up in just a little while. It was uh, VF Updates, Pool Shark, uh, Moose Elk. We also have my boy Darkness, a.k.a. Dankness, he will be playing uh, as well. We have a West <laughs> Darkness, aka Dankness. HQ. And That's maybe a lot. Just cut. Why not? You know? Just do your thing. But anyway, here you go. So, Star Wars Battlefront 2, folks. Now, this is awesome because essentially, phase one, you get to escort an MTT down the, the street of the here, and the pressure is on for the clones. They have to hold back the assault here. Dude, we're going to be putting uh, lots of hours the, in this the, game. The droids are, yeah. are sitting there trying to. Escort that MTT up the main pathway. Sound is if really good. If they're successful, we go, we go on to that phase two. But right now we're seeing some, some specialist gameplay from, yeah. I think, Battlefront updates. Yeah, let's actually talk about the specialist. And also, you, you're going to see a couple different classes here. This class <laughs> he shot his own guy. that Master G is using is the heavy class. Specialist, Connie or Sniper, right? But That's stormtrooper class, friendly fire, Ross. So what happened? The class is great. Yeah. You got a bit more health than your average trooper. They're also oh, able man. to look pop at that, that combat shield over Naboo. push into areas. So you can see those guys as pushers or defenders in some areas. But it looks like we got one of our vulture droids right now. I'm not sure who's flying this guy, but these guys are great at air to air trying to take out the. Uh oh. We've got some buffering issues. It happens. Although the still images look very nice. I mean, you get kind of appreciated the There's other ships that might longer. be coming in. Yeah. And one Starfighter. Otherwise, right. they're there to provide some great ground support like we're seeing here. 
Trying to get some oh, strength runs in on those cones. Oh, I no! oh, just ran into a building. Oh, oh, what was it? That's you, just, you just did it wrong there, buddy. So Sorry about we, that. We also do have the air support, but we also have ground support as well. We do, we do. Uh, so another thing that those air vehicles are great at is trying to take out some of the, the ground vehicles that you may see. The, the droid army has the AAT tank, something that's really great at you know, I, suppression. I really appreciate uh, how they're... A clip of the v -wing they have a fully that. realized oh, man, Naboo. Just mowing some, some droids down there. Yeah, just in the movie, like you only see, see like certain little parts here and there. It's like right. that's a fully fledged city, here, right? right. You can just come through for some great straight, uh, great bombing runs, really, and eliminate as many people as you possibly can. And also, you put the presence of an air vehicle out there. Players will fear the skies, and they will, you know, look for cover in this map where it's already difficult to find cover to begin with in this phase in particular. Absolutely, and you can see right now that there is an AAT tank sitting around on the battlefield. He has probably taken out those clone troopers, but this this droid, this vulture droid, is really stepping it up. What I love about this is everyone's like, oh, look at this great open map. And then when you start phase two, it's like everything starts coming in and coming way closer together. And we were Absolutely. talking a little bit more about the assault class. So for somebody who has just started playing this, never played any previous versions, do you feel like the Assault class might be something perfect for them to pick up? I think the start? Assault class is, is, yes, absolutely. It's something that is, ooh, ooh. that's painful. Uh, the Assault <laughs> class is something that uh, a lot of players will be able to jump right into. They're, they're your frontline flanker attacker. I think they're, they're going to be fairly easy. You can get right in and just start having you know, your typical run and gun action. Their, their signature ability, uh, you, you see here at the top of the screen, your number two ability, that switches you over to a shotgun. You get a little bit faster, and you're able to really get in there and kind of, you know, break those, break through those front lines. Oh, I love it. I love using the shotgun, man. It is so good. And it's actually, when I first used it, it really caught me off guard. I wasn't expecting it. And I said, wait a minute. Wow, look at that. People. Yeah. So I just charged into the room and, and just absolutely it's just absolutely beautiful. So fun, uh, to play with here. We're also seeing some great uh -oh, dog, some dog fighting, fighting here between <laughs> the clones and the separatists. This is certainly uh, what a lot of folks love in Star Wars and just really in any game that DICE makes, right? They just always do a good job with the air combat. He's <laughs> that is really so trying epic. to track him down. This, this vulture is not really having much tough. luck. No, yeah, that vulture could not shake him. Well, so we got Star Wars HQ here. You know, he's playing he's playing the assault class again. And you saw here that he has a signature thermal detonator uh, that he, he'll be able to kind of suppress some of those guys with as he rushes in. And there are different different weapons as well. Like one of the guns that uh, I would oftentimes use was the semi-automatic uh, gun. Oh, you know, he got owned. Slower, but you can get some great shots with it. And then there's also this nice. So essentially, compact, all the vehicles uh, from Episode style, One are controllable uh, on this you know, that level really of the uh, Naboo. People in close range. I was, you know, using a little. I mean, we want to give you a little. Those were the tanks that I think were part of the Naboo military. I was always. Oh no, actually, no, I'm wrong. Those were part of the Federation. I was always curious to see like how the how they worked because they were kind of more in the background of the film. Forward, uh, right. As the objective oh, continues ooh. to march down, he has to get away from that. He's trying to, I don't know, is he trying to flank the tank? That's not smart. I don't know, man. Maybe maybe he will. Maybe oh, you saw a little combat roll there. Got to give you some escape options in case you get into some, some hairy action. Uh-oh, we didn't get to see this one what before. Is that? Finally. that is cool. Some ATRTs, yes. So these are these are great for taking out those AATs. So these guys are a little quick. They have an ion charge ability. They'll, that way they'll be able to do a little bit more extra <laughs> it's damage. the Star the Wars segue. So <laughs> like totally, yeah, dude. Battlefield, really That's great. Points. Look, look at this. He's just Can you stop someone through. out? What can what can you do with this? Can, you, can, like, you can run someone over if you want. Can, oh, I was actually going to say, oh, 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 I'm oh, oh, it if I'm on top of it because my body's exposed. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was that question was answered, you know, instantly. Almost immediately. Right? Yeah, almost immediately. Oh man. So, uh, Mr. Musel here. You know, look for this guy to be on a tear a little bit later as well. And also, I did want to highlight, we had an officer, as a matter of fact, right in front of Star Wars We did, HQ one of my there. favorite classes. What, what is it about the officer that makes it so unique? I mean, my, my Twitch skills aren't where they used to be. I'm Fair. a bit slower nowadays, uh, but I'm, I'm able to, to really buff up my class, or buff up my teammates, try to let them get some extra health, let them push through the points faster. And oh. ooh. I love when one of the ships get blown out of the sky. It's pretty satisfying. Okay. So what, what's, and great about, what's great about some of these starfighters is these are accessed through our new battle point system. So instead of finding a pickup token on the on the map like we used to in the last game, uh, you're now able to, depending on how well you do, whether you're scoring points via kills, via uh, team play assist, or you're playing the objective like we really want players to do, you're earning points continuously that will allow you to spend those on, whether it be a special character, whether it be a vehicle, or even a hero. And the battle points that, that allows you yeah. to unlock all of those things. All those things, definitely. And I also mean, something to look out for, too. When we get into phase two, that's when battle points are really going to play a role there. Right? I mean, I right, right now, definitely, you see a lot more. It's an open space. You have time for this air combat. There's some vehicle gameplay. But once we get inside, it's going to be a different story. 
That's right. Things are uh, definitely going to heat up. And what is this happening, right? This is a uh, lock on just trying on. to shake him out. Yep. Nice. Yeah, they better enjoy their uh, air combat. Here. The N1 That's Starfighter not gonna looks be nice. For much longer. Oh, Master much longer, G is just <laughs> destroying him. Oh, 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 he got picked off. Nice job. But he was, I mean, he's doing what he needed to do support his team, right? It's that yeah. combined arms fire. You want to make sure that somebody's trying to cover you from the air. Oh, boy. So, and you can see after every respawn as well, you get those. Uh, How those many points, points you're earning? Right. That's so you right. Can use those later on. Got some uh, specialist gameplay here as well. Maybe you can take off a couple faces, perhaps. That and would so, be in the specialist good. class, you can also deploy different types of traps as yeah, well. Yeah, absolutely. So they have access to a trip mine. So if you want to sit there and you want to be, you know, that true sniper character, you set up some trip mines behind yourself, make sure nobody can flank you. But really, you're there to provide some of that cover fire for your troops downrange. And it's especially potent in this area because it is such a big open area. So that special to really shine in, in phase one. Some more uh, bombing runs here and just absolutely tearing them up. I have to say, man, Musok is killing it. Killing it in this world. Again, right. again, he's doing great. Oh, and are those Christmas their, uh, lights on the tree? The officer classes. I didn't see the them. <laughs> I wasn't sure what that yeah, was. Officer, fantastic for pushing, right? You want They're to showing multiplayer, but I mean, I want to see some of the story, like what you're gonna do. You were playing with your buddies. But still, this is this is immensely gratifying for me to see. I mean, this is just one level that we're looking at. I mean, think about all the different levels that are gonna be included in this game. You got your officers behind you, giving you some extra health, making sure that you're not, you're still able to complete that push. Or Especially considering side, that they're going to be enjoy, going through multiple down a point, the officers have access to a turret that they can films, the you know, in terms of the, the content. And give you a little bit more fire right. support for that area. I'm trying to see if Massive G here is, uh, you know, he's really focused on the bombing runs, right? He's not trying to go into combat with Muso, who's up there. There's uh, Darkness 429. Just shredding everyone up here. Maybe uh, he oh, can get a couple he just kills. Wanted to, he just went into siege is, mode. Yeah, this is happening. Oh, really yeah, so tell, tell us about the siege mode. Sure, so How does this play out? In siege I think mode, you and I would have fun uh, with that. For a limited time, you're able to just blow up. I think we would, Ron. Area effect shots. You lock down your position, but you're able to have a lot more firepower. We also just saw the B2 Super Battle Droid there as well. That's something you can get Another one of my favorites. Well. Another one of my favorites. Uh, yeah, you can grab those guys via the battle point system. Those guys, great at pushing points again. Right? Oh, we got some high health, oh, right. rapid fire. Oh, here we go. Oh, there it is. And Buffering. I have a feeling that this big everybody and their buddies are like, we can go to see this. Now yeah. we start phase Everyone signing on and checking it Two. out. And this is when the action really begins to pick up here because it gets real. Real? So what? What does it get? Really tight inside <laughs> of that building and players so now they're on phase two. The separatists try to breach two. the security points. And the clones have to defend the area. To just shred through everyone, especially with that cooling ability that he has, to be able to keep him just constantly shooting. Oh, Lee, man, this he's game gonna, looks so beautiful. Dice mean, always knows how to make a beautiful narrow game. pathways. He's going to be able to just. It almost looks like Rise, but with Star Wars. Those, those yeah, those you're absolutely right. And just waiting for I mean, the prime just, opportunity to push up here. It's just a feast for the out, eyes. You know, white boy there. Oh, and there, oh, oh here we go. Oh, yeah. Darth Maul. Here we go, folks. This Darth is where Maul. it starts to oh, get please. interesting. This is, it gets scary. Darth Maul will excel in phase two and phase three as you're inside. I mean, Just so you know right now, like, attacker. the buffering has gone to a... Oh, here we go, here we go. Oh, exactly. He's absolutely perfect for that. Absolutely. I mean, some of his abilities you can see here, he's got that spin attack. He's oh, oh my yeah. gosh. He's combat and just take eyes out in the, in the process. It was funny, I was talking to Musel earlier and he was using Darth Maul and he was saying how, there's Boba Fett as well, uh, but he was talking about how he wishes Darth Maul could reflect. I was like, if he could reflect, he'd be too strong. That's oh, cool. That was a good flank by Boba Fett and Maul. Just shredded the clone army. <laughs> oh my gosh, dude! What role does Boba Fett fill in this battle? Boba Fett is definitely a hunter killer. So if, if the other if the clone army is able to get some of their heroes in play, like this is where Boba Fett will really shine. Is with that jetpack of his, he's able to kind of float above the battlefield, uh, fire off some rockets. And really Look at the interior and architecture and the de decor the overall. My uh, goodness, this is the last game, wonderful. New tricks. Uh, he's got a new concussion rocket that will really disorient players completely. But he also has this rocket barrage instead of just one. Rocket, he's able to really just lay down some suppressive fire. Nice. Also, one thing to keep in mind, we saw the B2, here we go, but on the uh, clone side, you know, there are specialist, uh, you know, characters that you can pick up as well. We haven't seen much of it yet, but that would be uh, the clone jump trooper. That's right. Very that's different right. from the standard, like, assault class or heavy class. It has the jump jets that you love from Battlefront, the original. That's right. Uh, brought back here, but now focused on the central class. Exactly. Yeah, we're back to Boba Fett here with the Ooh, look at rocket that. jumps there. <laughs> 
He's shredding. Terrible. Abel just laid out so much firepower. It's intense. Oh, oh they got him though. Bull Effect got owned just then. Jesse was able to find him on that one. Yep. But here comes some officer gameplay here. Oh, good. Finally, somebody played some support. Support people matter too. They you do. Know? They you gotta <laughs> give them some love. <laughs> here, here. Yeah, exactly. Now, what is his two exactly? His two is the healing ability. His two ability is that, yeah, exactly. It's that healing ability. It gives you a little bit of buff uh, for your little over health, but it also heals you back up. So it's, oh, here we got some of the, the jump troopers. Oh boy, and here we go. It's uh, getting it ready for phase three in just a little bit. There's a jump trooper. We talked about him before. Jump Trooper's super fun to play, uh, but again, you know, it's attached to a specialist now, uh, so not everyone's going to have it equipped. Darth Although Maul really just looks badass, dude. Right. They did but so good on him. I'm to the Jump Trooper and shred people myself. I mean, I know people, we love this, people, a lot of people love the Jump Pack. Oh, oh, oh. we've got Rey! Oh. Not going to lie, I'm super excited to play as her. Uh, she's she's a, quite a powerful character. Don't run! Some of her got, abilities. Uh, you know, she got out of that one really, Don't really run. quickly, but... Oh, oh wow, they got out of the droid. Fallen by a Finish simple droid. No, but Rey has... Mind trick. Oh, good grief. I can Absolutely. watch Darth Maul keep going Ray's like mind that. Mind trick is, is something that against uh, all enemies, they'll be confused for a little bit. Your controls will kind of you know, work against you, making you a little bit more vulnerable to attack. Just so you guys know, this is when it gets insane. <laughs> because I can appreciate so the, uh, here. And oh, like the that, live gameplay. Like they're commenting on it, but I mean, it's a whole live so. play. But I mean, yeah. you, you saw it earlier, so every you got time Han that Solo you in there now. Life, we'll show you how many battle points you have. And some Han's Brolo. Reinforcements, <laughs> especially this late in the game, you'll see a lot more of these special classes coming out, a lot more of the heroes coming out. So again, this jump trooper here, you know, with his rocket launcher and his jump back, trying to be mobile, trying to fly into that, that last zone. And, and I hope they show, the like, point. Queen Amidala or something really since it's on Naboo. Well <laughs> She's going to have her own set of guns. Like, well, yeah, in the film, she, she actually took Just her castle back. Absolutely dominating the clones. They need to push out. They, they need to there. fight this one out here. There are so many lives left that the Separatists have to their team. They could really run through this. The clones have to start acting fast because if they cap it, that will be it. The Separatists will win this game. It's not looking so good for my boys in the clone army. I'm a Separatist fan, so I'm excited. I'm just going to go on whichever team wins. Oh, okay. So okay. I'm not going to be too picky here. Okay, you're just <laughs> jumping ship. I understand that. You know, no loyalties. Maybe you are Sith after all. Ooh. Maybe I am. Oh, who knows? Shots fired. Shots fired. Uh, oh, yeah, so in the, in the third phase, though, in the, the, the droids are trying to capture that. Oh, that was, that's the throne room that Queen this Amidala is, sits this in. Is the main, right. This is the main throne. And this uh, is such super close quarters. Do you have any, like, sort of strategies that you would... Uh, Absolutely. I mean, if, you're the, if you're the clone, they're blowing you're up all that, oh, that beautiful tile. Darth Maul just <laughs> owned Han Solo. It's like too soon, man. I can't relive Force Awakens again. You know, like don't do it. Darth Maul is just destroying absolutely everything. everything. I mean, is there any tips to like taking him down? I mean, you want to have a try to combine arms fire. Oh. Oh. Yeah, Liam Neeson. The tip is. <laughs> Blasters. <laughs> run away. Maybe That's run away. Run away and just shoot the crap out of him. MVP, Darth, Darth Maul. Oh, man. <laughs> he was our MVP. Look at that. Nice yeah. stuff. Moose up. Moose just, up. Congratulations. 36 kills he ended up picking up My there, man. My goodness. My goodness. Well, guys, that was it. What did you guys think? Intense. Not bad. I actually, not, I would I'm, figure I'm there'd lying. be a like, awesome. applause for that, it's but so good. It's like, whatever. I love the class-based gameplay. Personally. I don't think they have as large uh, of an audience again, at their you particular can really conference. Really get your squad, your friends, their press together anyway. and say like, "Hey, I want to." Oh you know, gosh, that dude, was, that was and, fast. You know, yeah. Some highlights here. Maybe not was the best highlight. Not the best highlight. You know, because although maybe it was. Let's take a look at some highlights. Oh! I think it's just a crash montage. I think that's what we're gonna do at this point. It's all crashing all the time. I'm down with that. But it was Nusuk. I mean, he's sitting there, you know, getting as many battles points as he can before his next life. I mean, that's what you want to try to see with those battle point systems. You want to either snowball your points, keep earning them, keep earning them, keep building, getting more, more and more things. Yeah, that's right. And again, you know, just the game. One thing I do want to... I always love the explosions uh, in Battlefront. You know, Battle just the way the game looks. It's, it's so beautiful. It, especially seeing this uh, part of the Star Wars universe brought to life. The way that they, the way that you guys really managed to do so. I mean, kudos on that one. Once again, you know, just drop, dropping jaws everywhere. We try, we try. I mean, the team back home is amazing. They do uh, incredible things. I mean, you can see it, it, just, it looks so pretty. Look, just look at this, this laser fire, it's intense. And it looks beautiful. It really does look incredible. So good. I was just gushing right now. You know, <laughs> like we get it, the game looks good, you know, definitely. Oh man, well, that was awesome. Uh, and overall, I mean. Yes, uh, yes, what? Oh no, we're, we're buffering again. <laughs>
<laughs> Overall, I'm dying I'm here. Say, you know, like, I can't wait to get my hands on it. I can't wait to coordinate with my friends, you know, and uh, destroy the clone scum. I can't that, that wait hurts. for that. that yeah, hurts. you know, exactly. Separatists all day. Well, guys, that was so awesome. Now, if you guys are in L.A., you can come join us at FanFest this weekend. And if you come down on Monday, we've got a chance for you guys to win a trip to Gamescom in Germany this August. All you have to do is come and play, which is, I mean, the father that's not asking too much. <laughs> and you have to be the best player of your match, and you guys will be entered to win a trip for two to Cologne, Germany, and a full pass oh, yeah. to Gamescom. You've As been someone, before. Yeah, I've been there plenty of times. It's one of the most ridiculous uh, yeah. conventions I've been there ever. plenty of yeah, times. You know, i got it's my own plane. Massive. So you're not. You're, <coughs> Excuse you're, me. If you don't get the trip, you're going to be really Woo! sad. But if you do get the trip, you and took Buddy, quite a swig oh, of the old crown just now. Fun Hopefully, it I'll is. see you there. It's good for well, you. Well, if you guys like Star Wars like we do, and you guys want to play as your favorite heroes and villains, you guys can download Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes right now on Android or iOS. You see, and that's you like play the, as the, any like the professional personality, kind of the robot personality. That's calls. what's like so so. That you're uh, making Battlefront two. Because you, you've been playing a lot of, lot of uh, Galaxy of Heroes. I play a ton of Galaxy of Heroes. I've played that game every day since it launched. I think I've, I've actually spent about $1,000 in that game. <gasps> you have a problem. I, I do have a problem. Yeah. Oh, but it's just, there's just so much Star Wars goodness. I can't, yeah. I can't help it. I, I, I got to pick it up. I have to play You it. should try it. Yeah, I know my brother. He, he's going nuts about it. So I, I guess I have to make it happen. Yeah, I was actually playing. I started playing in December. So around the holidays, that's pretty okay. much all I did. Good. It was great. At Christmas, just in time. All right. Away, Sorry, I'm busy. <laughs> well, thank you guys so much for joining us here. Stay tuned to Battlefront2.com for more about the game. And we'll see you guys soon. Thanks, Paul. Golden Boy. This was incredible. And now I'm going to send it over to Patrick for more. Hey, Patrick. Hi. Welcome back. Thank you, everyone. And thank you to the real rock stars of this show. The development teams inside <laughs> he EA said a rock star. are truly amazing. <laughs> now, we can't wait for more of you to play. And there's more coming. Stay tuned online for a closer look at some of our biggest game. And remember, EA Play is for all of you, our players. Thank you all for joining us. Now, let's play. That's a good little slogan or mantra, or, um, mantra there. Let's play. I like yeah, that. yeah, I do like that. Well, what a way to kick off E3 2017. I mean, I, they had quite a few games there. I'm like pumped, dude. Yeah, no, I, I am too. I uh, They did great with the sports games, with the, with the physics and the story modes. Um, glad to see that they... Uh, they listen to the fans with Star Wars. I'm pumped. I mean, like, like going down the list, they over, they really only showcased a handful of games, which kind of surprised me because it's EA. I figured they'd have a lot more games, but the ones that they did demonstrate, I thought were just terrific. I mean, like they start off with uh, Battlefield One, yeah. which I don't know if if it's if it's like an expansion pack like to the existing Battlefield yeah. One or if it's like its own standalone title. I'm not sure, but I mean, I thought it it definitely caught my attention. I believe it's going to be a DLC. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I would definitely get it. I'm, I'm not finished with the first game yet, but it's totally worth buying the DLC at this point. They've done such a great job with it. Yeah. Yeah. And I still actually need to get, um, back into that game. I just, I borrowed your game and played just the very like tip of the iceberg of it. I need to actually play all the way through the story mode and just seeing that well, DLC Ross, or whatever it is. I mean, no, since I'm going to be in Canada, no Ooh. one's going to be given battlefield one little love. Maybe you could. I think that's a grand idea. I'm just full of them. I like that idea, Steve. But uh, need for, I mean, it's funny because I'm not a big, uh, I, I love athleticism and I love sports, but I'm not a big, I don't, I, don't, I don't play sports games on games, really, right? Right. But I can appreciate the story mode that they're taking and, and the creative approaches that are taken with the story modes. And um, Well, I think that, that that was something that fans have been clamoring for and maybe perhaps like, they didn't know how to really identify with it but it's it's like what you said earlier where a lot of the sports games every sequel that you saw come out they would just have kind of a graphical upgrade right they'd have a, a upgraded or, or or updated roster based on who got traded to which team and that sort of thing but there really wasn't anything beyond that and i i'm really happy to see that ea has been able to to put some tlc into more of that you know, quote unquote hero's journey for a sports player, which I think works great. I mean, that when you think about like these athletes of today, when they start out and they're, they're going through high school, they get through college drafted through scholarship yeah. and they get drafted. Exactly. Um, there is a, 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 
a journey that takes place when they make it to the pros and they've been able to finally make it to the big leagues. And then, you know, are they able to, to win the, the tournament or the championship or the Super Bowl, whatever it is, whichever you know, sports game you're playing? I think that's a, that's a brilliant move on their behalf because that suddenly makes me want to come back. I, I, I used to, to play sports games here and there, not a ton, but like, you know, every once in a while I get like a football game or I get the hockey game or a basketball hockey. game. That's right. Hockey was, yeah, that Be was the kind penguins. of. Uh, penguins. Penguins is my team. Pittsburgh Penguins. Um, but yeah, I. I really do think that that that's going to add um, some injection of, of uh, refreshing material for the the sports games in general from EA. And I, I'm curious if I'm sure it's probably going to be also um, done by NBA 2K, whatever the 2018 or whatever it yeah. is that uh, is the Sega still own them. Uh, maybe I, th- I think it's, I think Sega still owns them, but um, you know but, what? Sorry to cut you off, Russ. Oh, not I a problem. Love you, my brother. Mm. Um, speaking of Sega, and speaking of Star Wars and droids, mm-hmm. and speaking of sports, you know what I was thinking about? A lot of speaking there. No, I was thinking about Russ. What exactly were you contemplating? I think it was uh, Cyberball. Oh, back my in the gosh. day, <laughs> Cyberball <laughs> for the Sega Genesis. Yes, man. How many hours did you have? Play? That was an awesome sports game. Yeah, that game was amazing. Yeah, that that was so fun. It was like such a, a departure from like the, the typical sports games or yeah. whatever. And just, yeah, I have many fond memories of, man, Cyberball. I haven't heard that title in They had an arcade so at long. Scandia back in the day. Was, did, they Sega did. Make, did Sega make that or was that, was that also EA? I don't remember. I know that way back in the day when Sega was, was, was with their kind of Sega master system and especially with the Sega Genesis, they were pretty tight with EA at the time. And EA was responsible for coming up with like the, the very first, like Joe Montana football game. Right. And then something happened where like EA splintered off. They wanted to become a third party and create their own game. And Sega kept their own IP of Joe Montana. And right. then all of a sudden you had that rivalry begin yeah. between John Madden football right. and Joe Montana football, the sports talk football, right. that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. That was definitely back in the day. And then EA was really clever and shrewd in actually approaching um, the various associations and being able to lock up the exclusives for like all the players, all the uniforms, just all the, the licensing that goes into that. And so they were able to basically have essentially like, like a monop- really a monopoly, I would say. Right. Um, but you, yeah. Do you remember how, uh, when you would you would tackle a robot so many times and it was like you're you're, 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 you're running back robot you start to smoke and fight you're like uh, oh, I'm I'm really close to this touchdown right now and then like yeah. somebody would tackle him and he would just like explode yeah. like this huge like epic <laughs> explosion with the robot that was funny or sometimes you'd have like there there'd be like a turbo or a nitro thing that you could do where like you get a little burst of speed but then it would kind of wear off and suddenly you have your your defenders catching up to you and you're like oh, 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 oh. And then of course you know you'd explode if you were on the verge of doing so, but golly, man, I totally forgot about Cyberball. Yeah, that is baby. so funny. Uh, what do you think of Need for Speed? Uh, I, here's the thing with Need for Speed. There, there's been, they're, they're pumping out Need for Speeds quite often, and they've taken a, a little bit of a break. Um, and so, I don't know. I, I have to kind of see a little bit more with it because the past Need for Speeds, and I, I, I told you earlier, uh, the last one I played was the run and they've had a couple of games since and they've gotten, you know, so, so reviews mm-hmm. and whatever, whatever. Um, the need for speeds that I remember are kind of the same thing again and again and again, you're running from the cops. The cops have the same weapons. You kind of take down people and the graphics get better and it's similar to fast and the furious. And it seems like they were really popular in the past. Uh-huh. Um, maybe like with Fast and the Furious 3, but since then they've been trying to see what sticks Yeah, uh, with, with the audience. You and can I'm definitely not- tell that they're taking cues from like the, like you said, like the Furious series. And, right. Which uh, is fine. I think that that actually fuses in nicely with kind of the persona of Need for Speed, like the, just the overall series. Right. I think that that could add in quite a bit, but uh, I, I think I would have liked to have seen a bit more variation in the levels because we, yeah. we just kind of saw like, here's, a, what was it, a Shelby? Yeah. And it was take trying. It was so funny watching like this, this diesel truck, yeah, like I'll run truck. a Shelby Cobra. <laughs> it's like, always in the, in the slow lane <laughs> on the highway. <laughs> I'm just like, okay, this, this is a little hard to accept here, but 
I I did think of the environments, and this is this is just the biggest thing. Every movie movie, wow, that that, that tells you like how good the graphics are. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm thinking kidding. this is basically like an interactive movie, um, and that's what's so exciting about gaming these days is that the fidelity of the graphics and just the immersion factor has grown over the years to the point where it's like we're getting pretty close. I mean, I would say we are probably about two to three generations away, two or three uh, video game console generations away from not being able to tell a film from a game because the, the poly count, the texture resolution, the uh, even the real time lighting is, is getting to the point where it's just, it's just a feast for the eyes. And I know I said that earlier, but I think with Need for Speed, the environments um, were, were certainly eye catching as were uh, within the other games. And I, I remember that was always something that I wish would be better in previous like, console generations like the Xbox 360, PS3, and, and before that. And I feel like with Xbox One and PS4, we finally have been able to see a certain level of just production value within the environments that just it makes me excited and i think that we saw that like you know when witcher 3 first came out i think witcher 3 was like the first game that like it was just this huge open world and it was so vast and the graphics were able to keep Beautiful. up with it especially yeah. when they when they um came out with that dlc pack yep and they upgraded they actually had an update for the graphics and it's so exciting for me to see this. I'm I'm really really ecstatic right now because I wasn't sure like what EA was going to do. I mean EA each year EA is kind of hit or miss. Like it yep. depends on what their lineup is. And I was I'm so thrilled that they just had a very succinct lineup. You know, they didn't have like 20 titles that they were showing. They they kept it to basically like six games, six or yeah. seven games. Um Anyway, I'm totally gushing and rambling, but like I'm, I, this is like a really terrific kickoff to E3. It is. I I, I do. I, I appreciate pretty much every game they show. I mean, Need for Speed. Now, I still want to see a little bit about it, but one thing I can appreciate is um, the sound effects with the cars. I spoke about that a couple episodes ago. Yeah, I remember. And some of the games just don't get it right. Need for Speed. That's one thing they do get right is they they amplify the sound at the point of distortion. Mm. And some of these high performance cars. I mean, good luck having a conversation inside them because they're they're loud, and right. that's how they're supposed to be, and that's what people kind of sort of appreciate about them is is that the, the specific exhaust tunes. Well, and you being a car guy, I mean, you you look for stuff like that. Right. I think yeah. other people who are just like you who have a passion for vehicles and and uh, w- you know look for how does the interior look? Is the interior authentic to the actual right. physical yeah. version? How is this? How does it sound? How does it control? I mean, obviously the control is like the biggest. I would I would think like like the biggest component that yeah. you guys are looking for overall all for a racing game. But one thing I like too about that Shelby is you, you saw the modifications that are on it. Cause if you look at a car and someone has a wide body kit, for example, mm-hmm. you're going to see different seams in the car. It's not going to be all welded together, Yeah, you know? And, and I appreciate the extra detail that they put in the vehicles. Um, going back to star Wars cause they're showing it a bunch. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, one thing I, I can real, I mean, I can't emphasize this enough is uh, maybe cause I'm cheap, but <laughs> you know, when, when you spend 60 bucks on a game, I want to get something substantial for my 60 bucks and then all the DLC will be up to me to, to buy right. or whatever. Right. And EA personally, uh, I've seen the past go, okay, well, if you want to get this, then this is going to cost you an extra, you know, five bucks. This mm-hmm. is going to cost you an extra 12 bucks, right. whatever, whatever. So it's nice to see them listen to their, their fan base and go, okay, we, we love you guys. We want to increase the popularity of this. If you spend... X amount of dollars on Star Wars. Here's going to be all the extra, you know, content you're going to get for free. Uh, I think they took a note from Witcher from that because yeah. Witcher gave you a ton of content. For yeah, free. Witcher was very generous with that. Um, and that's how you build your fan base and just giving them gifts. I mean, who does not like free stuff? Yeah. Well, and and you touch on something that I wanted to talk about after the show, which is the fact that EA has really come about faced from where they were about a year or two ago. And that is that EA was doing, and this is what I mean by hit or miss. EA has always been a very aggressive company. I, I used to, as you know, I used to work for EA um, several years ago, way back about 10 years ago or so, maybe even longer. I don't even remember. <laughs> Time flies. <laughs> I'm so old. <laughs> um, but anyway, they they have always been a very aggressive company. They've been a very shrewd company. They've been able to um, identify and capitalize upon various types of ideas or even developers. You know, they over the years and the decades, they've been able to acquire um, 
some quality developers on, you know, underneath their umbrella and then be able to spread that, that t- uh, gamer tech basically to all the other studios as well. So that way you see like this constant kind of raising of all the IPs in terms of the overall quality. However, I think one of the, the pitfalls that they sometimes run into is the fact that they get a little too greedy at times and they're always kind of pushing the envelope. Like how, you know, can we, you know, charge them full amount, but then not have as much content in there. And I know that there has been a spirited debate online about this. And one of the issues that I had, which I I commented on in a previous episode, is the fact that when the first Star Wars Battlefront game came out, along with the first Titanfall game, EA had completely gutted the single player campaign. That was a mistake. And the, the reason for it being, and I've talked to friends about this because I was so, you know, we, we have friends who don't necessarily care about the, the single player campaign and they think, oh, well, I'm only here to play online, that sort of thing. And that's fine. That's fair enough. I, I have no problem with that. The issue is, is that the loyalty from gamers regarding having an emotional attachment to a game is absolutely dependent upon having a single player campaign. Very true. You have to have a story that grips the player. You have to be able to allow the gamer to be able to establish and forge a relationship with the main character of the game. So when it comes to Titanfall, for instance, you know, I love the concept. I love the, the yeah, company the too. Yeah, amazing. Yeah, um, but the problem was is I got in and I started playing multiplayer and I was just like, okay, well, I'm kind of, I'm in this first-person shooter game. I'm running around. I'm gunning other people down, but I don't know why. Yeah. Like, what, what else is there? What, 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 what's the purpose? Like, why why do I want to be able to, to you know, take these people out? What, what is this environment that I'm in? And so, yep. you know, even though the game had a lot of tight gameplay mechanics to it, I found myself losing interest as a result because there wasn't enough storytelling involved. And so I think with with what EA has shown us today is the fact that they have gone back to the drawing board. They realized, hey, this was a mistake, even though they'd never admit it publicly. But the idea being that we need to go back into games like Titanfall, like Star Wars, like the Titanfall 2 game came out and they had more of a single player campaign, which I'm, I'm currently playing through right now. And, and as a result, yeah, like I'm, I'm enjoying to learn about just what this whole world is about. And with Star Wars, with all of the canon that they've already established through the films and the books and just, just everything, there is a bit of that there. However, players are clamoring to be able to play through with their favorite characters from the films. Right. And I think you bring up a good point, which is, um, I, I just, I had a brain fart. Oh my gosh. I was, I was, going to say, I was like, don't cut them off. Don't cut them off. Don't cut them off. And then like, you finish up and I'm like, uh, nuts. Oh, I know what I was going to say. And Russ. it came right back. Man, ladies and gentlemen. Thank goodness. Uh, oh. Um, Did you just oh, lose wait, wait, it again? No, no, I got it. So, which is <laughs> like mistakes are forgivable. You know, as long as you, as long as you listen to your audience uh-huh. and you know what to expect and you appreciate your fan base, they are going to forgive you yeah. for a mistake as long as you give them what they want. I mean, right. these people are paying you money. You might as well give them what they want. Right. And if they listen to the audience and they, they give you, I mean, they're going to be forgiven mm-hmm. and forgiven in the fact that everyone's going to go out and buy their game now that they know that it's better. Right. Yeah, no, it's, <laughs> it, <laughs> I knew I was going to get my thought back sometime. <laughs> it was so You're funny dream. when you were talking like that. I looked over at you. I'm like, what is it? <laughs> it's gone. And all of a sudden he just kind of like, just <laughs> had that moment. We're like, Oh, that thought just kind of went uh, out the window, but then it came right back and then it went out the window again. And it came right back again. You know, Russ, I want you to talk to me about Anthem. I don't know nothing about it. This is the <laughs> first time I've seen it. You're you're excited. Tell me your thoughts. Okay. So it was a very, very quick preview that apparently they're going to go more in depth tomorrow at the uh, Microsoft Xbox press briefing. In which case, once again, just to remind you guys, we are going to be doing a podcast each day. There's a press conference going on and then we're going to upload it that same day. So hopefully you guys will be able to get into it and either listen to it the same day or 24 hours later. But So there have been a lot of rumors going around online about what BioWare has been up to in terms of a new IP. And they've been very hush-hush about it. They've been focusing more on like the Mass Effect series and some of the other ones. But if you think about just kind of the pedigree of BioWare, they have their Jaded Empire, their Knights of the Old Republic, and of course their Mass Effect, um, in addition to some of the the other films. Oh, well, I just said films again. It's not film, it's a game. Yeah. Uh, 
you know, I, I, even Dragon Age, I, I believe, was also done by Bioware. Right. Um, so what's interesting is that they, they've been very held, they've been held in high esteem over the fact that they really know how to make an RPG. And I think that they are curious to see, you know, what can they do beyond that? And I think it's, it's, it's very similar to Blizzard in the sense that Blizzard was always really, um, Rego- you know, well regarded in the sense of like, oh, they're they're super good at doing real time strategy games, or even with Diablo, it was kind of an action RPG. But they really stayed in this this kind of genre or or subgenres of, a, of an overarching genre. And so it was so refreshing to see how Blizzard took a risk with Overwatch, and it's it was a huge success. And I think that Bioware is going to be going in that same direction because. Rumors have been going around that, hey, I think Bioware might be developing a Destiny killer. It's either that or perhaps they're going to be relaunching one of their, their pre-existing IPs to be able to, to take advantage of the next generation hardware. And that was no Knights of the, Re- of the Republic that we saw. That right there may have just been the Destiny killer that people have been kind of alluding to. I'm down for competition because it uh, keeps you on your toes. Well, and, I, and I'm excited too because, you know, you and I never played the original Destiny game. Right. However, I can say for myself that I'm very much interested in plunging into the world of Destiny with Destiny 2. And and just as much, whatever this is going to be. Exactly. You know, that, I mean, that's the whole thing. Bring out the good games. Is like, you know, if this is in fact like, like the competition, the rival to Destiny, I mean, talk about perfect timing. It goes right. back into EA's ability to be able to identify something that does work, capitalize on it, and be able to create something that is a, comp- you know, a, a competitive product in the market. And I mean, the name itself, Anthem, that is that, such that's a, that's a good name. Oh my yeah. gosh, it is such a cool name. Surprised like I got no chills one thought of that earlier. <laughs> It was it was seriously like like just the, the little sneak peek we saw. I am very curious to see what's going to happen with that. I am a big fan of Bioware in terms of just the the quality of storytelling that they're able to do and, and just how they push the envelope with game tech in general. But if that is in fact a first person shooter, we don't even know if it's a first person shooter. It, it may just be another RPG. I have no idea. But the the the, the vibe I got from the sneak peek was that of a first person shooter. So I'm very curious to see what happens, especially considering the fact that Mass Effect has, even though it's third person, right? they still really have gotten the, the gameplay mechanics down. And so I have high hopes for it. Yeah, no, I, I like how they do it in the marketing where they, it's good. they go, okay, Bioware is coming out with something. We're not going to tell you what it is. We're just going to pique your interest. And then here's the trailer. We're right. not going to tell you what, you know, this is all you're going to see. I mean, the marketing on it, it's very well done. Now, the other game that they were demonstrating for us was a way out. And oh yeah, no, we got to get that one. Yeah, we got to get that one. We got to play through that. I thought that the guy who who was up on stage did a really nice he job. He was cool. He was he was just sincere and authentic, yeah. and it was yeah. You know, one of the Appreciate things that. that that I think everybody can can notice, all the gaming community can notice when we watch these press conferences is is when uh, whoever's the, whoever the presenter is is up on stage and. They They're step out of the teleprompter for a bit. That's show the them who they are. That guy was great. If it's too rehearsed, see, here's the deal with the gaming community, and, and these studios have got to understand this is that we can smell fake. Yeah, you know, we, we can smell corporate America is sort of yeah, talking to us. Yeah, we, yep. can, we can we can tell when you're you're not being sincere or, or authentic, and that is uh, you know it, it's unfortunate because we see right through that. And so when you have someone who comes up who goes off script, who's just there to, to, to show off their game and they're excited to be there and whatnot. Authentically excited too. Exactly. Yeah, for sure. You know, like like then you, all of a sudden you get engagement from your viewership from home who are watching this whole conference go on online. And I really felt that that was the case with A Way Out. And the, what's interesting about the game itself was that the graphics, the graphics have a unique style to it, but it's not... Any, it, it wasn't like Battlefront 2. Right. You know, it wasn't like jaw dropping graphics. It had a style to it, but what hooked me about it was once again the relationship quality to it, that 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 pillar of the game where they at least based off of how they were pitching it to us, you know, they were really encouraging the idea of, you know, get a buddy together. You guys are playing this game co-op together. You're playing through a co-op story. Once again, story. Right. Um and, and, and those are the types of things that make me think about 
back when like like what made Halo such a huge success is the fact that you could have like a four player co op single player campaign that you could do you know via Xbox Live in you, the you, same room. You, take you, have you? Yeah, you can either do it in the same room or you you know if if you're like all the way across the country, you could <laughs> still you know log in together on Xbox Live, play through the story mode, and as a result, you have this huge like loyal fan base of the Halo series because of the fact that there's this, this story component that they could get behind and have an emotional attachment to. And so I think that with a way out, I think that it's a great, you know, angle or, or direction, if you will, from EA in the sense that they are exploring games with a more user experience community focus. And I think that that's a, a great way to go about it because Oh, there was a kind of a while where the, where the industry was was doing more of a, a single player experience when it came to the story mode itself. You exactly. could go online, you could do the online multiplayer, um, which you is know, component fine, of it. Fine, but I mean, it's not you know you don't have someone in the same room that you can even socialize with. Exactly. And the thing is, too, the graphics. I mean, they're not terrible. No. I mean, some scenes they look good. Some team, some some scenes they look terrific, and that's easily forgettable with the creativity they took in the game with the split screen and, and the story mode and everything else they're putting in there. I mean, graphics by itself do not make a game. Right. And so that, I mean, yeah, I, I mean, I can forgive a little bit, you know, lower resolution or lower detail for the rest of the depth yeah. in the game. Yeah. The, the, the game, this game, a way out success is going to hinge on how well fleshed out the co-op relationship is. If, if they can nail the relationship aspect of the game, then I think it's going to be a success overall. And I, I, I for one look forward to it. I, I think that, that there's a lot there, at least once again, we're, we're seeing the pitch of it, but my interest is definitely peaked. I definitely would like to see it. And I, and especially given the, the context of them, like being in prison together, they're trying to break out. It has kind of that Shawshank redemption. Right. Or, or, feel. or the prison break, like a show. If that too, but the prison go. break show. Absolutely. So it's, it's going to be interesting to see how that all pans out. I, I, I mean, if I had to pick something that I was a little critical of with that particular game, it was just the fact that, um, some of the, the, the facial expressions were limited, which I, I, you know, honestly, I've come to expect with, with this type of set because this is part of the EA originals. They're looking for indie developers. You know, they're, they don't have as big of a budget or the, the staff as, say, like DICE. You know, DICE has always been at the forefront of having just these benchmark graphics and, and immersion quality. So what was that Xbox Live arcade title that you were playing? We, we were constantly talking about for days after. It was like a side scroller. And uh, it was kind of set rather dark, and you were at this blob towards the end. Oh, uh, inside. Inside. So, I mean, that's another take on, like, you don't have to have top-of-the-line graphics. We were right. talking about that for at least five days. Yeah, yeah, after I beat it. That yeah. game was deep. Mm -hmm. So that just goes goes to show you that you don't need top-of-the-line graphics. Well, too. Inside was was probably one of my favorite titles of 2016. That, yeah, that, that game was was something else. I, mean, I, I remember, cool. like, that was the kind of game that you would come over, you'd hang out. Yeah, I'd just watch. Yeah, it was a game that, like, and, that, and that's kind of rare these days yeah. I guess you could say is it's just a fact that um you there are certain games where you know you sit down with your friends or family whoever they are and you know you'll watch for like five minutes and then you're like right. oh, okay well that's nice I want to go do something else or whatever but there are certain games that just draw you in even yeah. if you're not playing the game you're just sitting there and you're like what's gonna happen next and inside was definitely so good it was such a good game you know, I think it's interesting this draw between or, or the the border between Hollywood and games, and Hollywood's getting sort of on the weaker line, and yep. games are like taking over as far as yep. creativity and story, imagination. They are, and and I think that you're starting to see a lot more interest coming from the folks who do work in Hollywood, who have been, you know, they've established their careers more in film, and are slowly but surely making the transition from film back into games. Because the, I actually I do know for a fact that, for in terms of um, overall gross, that games has officially taken over film in terms of of how much money they make in an annual. Year, yeah. I mean, we're starting to see some of the uh, the games come on the main screen for Hollywood, and like with Netflix, for example, they're taking over the they're not there or they're making a Witcher series, right? So, so what game uh, out of the ones that EA showed today? Which one has you most excited? 
Uh, man, it's, it's a toss up between Star Wars and uh, A Way Out, to be honest. I'm okay. really looking forward to A Way Out. Star Wars, I think it's going to be good, but I think it really hinges on the story they have planned for us. I'm curious. I mean, I'm going to be keeping my, I'm going to yeah. keep my eye on pretty much everything that EA has to offer. I, and I'm not just saying that because we're watching the, the right, press right. conference. I mean, this is the first time that I think in my memory of what EA is going to bring out that everything they've showcased is definitely good. It's, mm -hmm. cu I mean, I'm curious. It's not like, ah, eh, that looks okay. Well, you know, they, they showcase 10 games. I'm interested in three. Right. Like I'm curious about all of them. Yeah. Well, it was interesting too, is that before E3 began, typically in the past, the, all the press conferences would, would start like on Monday and then Tuesday and Wednesday. Sometimes you'd have some on Thursday. And this year was interesting because you had Microsoft that all of a sudden wanted to, to do it do, do theirs earlier, which was on Sunday. And then shortly after they announced that, then all of a sudden EA came out once again, being that like, I'm telling you that this company is very competitive they come out and they say, well, we want to do ours on Saturday. And so now it's like you have the whole weekend going into the week that was always traditionally E3 and you have this thing going on as a, as a result. And so it's, I, I was curious to see how that was all going to play out. Um, you know, one of the games that I forgot to, all, or, well, almost forgot to mention was the Spider-Man Exactly. Game. We almost forgot about it. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> unintentionally, we were, I think we were taken with uh, the other few games, but yeah, Spider-Man. I mean, a, an open world New York that you can fly through like you can in the movies, like right. either, from, either of the Spider-Man movies. Mm -hmm. I mean, how cool is that? Yeah. And you can break through windows, go inside buildings. Well, and it's the way that you can break the windows and go into buildings too that has matured since previous efforts have, have gone on. You know, typically if you if you break uh, through a window, I remember back in the day, like when the when physics in games was kind of in its infancy, uh, you, you know, you were just really thrilled to be able to break something in a polygonal world. And then that was kind of the mainstay for a while. And now we're starting to see more maturity in terms of like when you smash through a window based on the trajectory of your character you have a lot more real-time physics and you're able to, to, to see much more of the the actual fractures and the cracks and like the way the wind like a window would break or a way a box would break or something to that effect and I, I, we saw that quite a bit in spider-man even though the spy I, I have a feeling we'll probably get to see more spider-man as the e3 continues on Plus but as, as closer we get to the movie too yeah yeah I, I was pretty curious about um, just how that game was going to be because I have talked to other friends who, you know, they've been following the game since um, the very early stages and I, and I just didn't really follow it all that much. And looking at the footage that they had shown today, I'm hooked. I think I'll probably end up getting it as a result just because I, I had no idea that there was that much quality in that game. So I think e, e, well, <laughs> EA has uh, kicked off E3 uh, with a bang <laughs> yeah, and I'm just, sure. I'm, I'm excited, dude. Like, like that, that is a great feeling to come out with. And then of course, tomorrow we're going to be seeing a lot of the, the goodness coming from the Xbox Scorpio. I'm very curious to see how that's going to oh. be along with all the games. We didn't even talk about that. They, they showed some scenes from the Scorpio with the, the football. Yeah. Man. Yeah. They, they briefly in, in the, during the, the EA uh, demonstration right now with the EA conference, um, a press conference, excuse me. They had like these still images from Xbox Scorpio. You could tell that they just wanted to kind of just slide that in real quick. Um, but yeah, just, just the, um, the close-ups you could see, I mean, what do they have? Like had like, like threads, like individual threads within the uniforms. You yeah. Could tell. Well, like they had knee pads that underneath the uniform that you could see that the, the, the textures of the knee pad and stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, it wasn't just there. It looked like it was actually pushing out of the fabric right. of their, uh, of their uniform. But anyway, um, yeah, no, I mean, if EA is kicking off E3 and everybody else has to live up li to live it, up to it <laughs> I mean, that that's highly competitive. And, and if they do, this is going to be a phenomenal year. For exactly. Games. And I, it's, it, that's one of the things is that if all the companies are able to have this caliber of show, we're in for a massive treat. And I, that both tickles me pink. And it terrifies me because <laughs> it terrifies my wallet. Yeah. 
<laughs> being real. Yeah. I mean, I don't know how, I mean, like I said, I've said so many times in previous episodes, I have so many games that I have not f- finished yet. I mean, I'm, I'm just bouncing. I, I literally have gamer ADD right now because I'm having to like bounce between games. And of course, then there's the mainstays like Overwatch that I'm having to play through and enjoy, which you know, this weekend, of course, is double XP for Overwatch. So I'm trying to get in as much as possible so I can unlock as much of the, you know, anniversary goodness as, as I can. Speaking of which, I got the um, the Pharaoh costume last night, Russ. Oh, congratulations. After you went to bed, I, I guess I stayed up a little bit later. Very nice. I, I, you know what? I actually think I got the Bastion skin. Oh, what? I think I did. I, I, I got a Bastion skin, but I think I'll have to show you later, but I, I'm pretty sure I got the anniversary skin. I was adding up everything last night about uh, how much I need to spend. And it's about 11,000 something rather. And I have about 9,400 credits right now. So there's a <laughs> lot more planning to do because I haven't got everything I wanted to get. You're so close. Uh, they give you stuff for characters you don't main or you don't play that often. Uh-huh. I'm like, come on. I don't want us another Zariah costume. Yeah. You know, I, I don't play Zariah. <laughs> Give me stuff that I want. Yeah, I'm looking forward. I've actually been fortunate in the sense that I've been able to get quite a few of the skins. I'm still wanting to get the diva skin. Um, let's see. I also recently got the you Soldier got the, 76. I need to get that one. Yeah, that one's actually really cool. Um, yeah, there, there are quite a few other skins out there, but I think I'd say about I have about 75 to 80% of the skins that I was hoping for. If I don't get everything, Ross, you know who's going to have to make the sacrifice, I think, is... Um Diva. I don't think I'm going to get that costume because I don't play Diva all that much. But you really um, don't know. I love that costume. I mean, that, that costume is near and dear to me because I love that that kind of fifties time in life. The look. The, uh, oh yeah. But I don't play Diva at all. Um, but at least I can still appreciate it when people play her. But um, I think with the money constraint or the uh, game credit constraint, <laughs> um, I might have to sacrifice that one to get everything else. Like I said I want. you can move to China. <laughs> I'm going to buy a nice summer home in China. There you go. Well, we appreciate all of you guys sticking with us as we watch this day one of E3. I know that that I can speak for the two of us. I mean, we are just pleased as punch right now with how things have been kicked off, and we look forward to seeing so much more. And just to remind you guys, we are going to be kicking off a podcast each day that they have a press conference and uploading it the same day. So that way, if you guys are unable to watch it or or if you're on vacation or whatever, but you want to get some kind of E3 goodness, you can definitely download it through our podcast. It's available on both iTunes and Google play. We're also going to make it available on SoundCloud. So if you go to soundcloud.com slash joygasm TV, you'll be able to find that as well. Uh, Other than that, we definitely encourage you guys to leave questions, comments, or constructive criticisms on our Twitter page at Joygasm TV. We're also on Facebook.com slash Joygasm TV. So um, fa- the Facebook page, we are going to be making it a point to um, be able to upload as many articles as we find from E3, just well, whether they're game trailers or if there are just new news articles in general regarding different types of developments within the games industry. We'll try and make sure we have you covered. So be sure to check back in, check into your podcast tomorrow because there will be yet another awesome podcast, we hope, from both Microsoft and Bethesda. So until then, we'll see you guys later. Bid you adieu.